Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Steelers Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Rivera from SteelersSanctuary.com, and this is my co-host, David Korob. Dave, what's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up? Um, let's start out with reviewing the, the big games yesterday, the conference championships. Uh, start with the first game. Uh, Eagles beat the 49ers pretty handily. Uh, big story there, quarterbacks getting hurt. Both, both 49ers quarterbacks are just unbelievable luck from, for the 49ers. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as they hit his elbow, dude, Perry's elbow, I was like, oh, they're cooked. <laughs> yeah. Then their backup quarterback, um, Johnson, he he ended up getting a concussion. So yeah. he was out. Yeah, the, I tweeted dude. at one point. I, I don't know what Kyle Shanahan did in a prior life, but it must have been bad because it's all coming back to haunt him now. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I due to luck. My God, that was some horrible luck. I mean, you know it's bad when McCaffrey's switching out helmets and putting on the helmet so he can hear the plays getting called in. I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. I, I a lot of these teams, including the Steelers, man, they really they really play with fire with only going with two quarterbacks into a game. Yeah. yeah like I, I I get you, I get you're trying to, you know, smash as many other, you know, players that you can onto that roster for the for that game, but like Man, dude, I've seen this more often than not now. That, and is it because all these QBs are so mobile? Is that why we're, is that why we're seeing it more often? I mean, I know the play; he didn't get hurt. He was in the pocket when he got hurt. Yeah. But I mean, are we seeing it more often now because of so many mobile quarterbacks? It's yeah. I think it's a little bit of that. I I've, I've heard other people um, theories that because the practices aren't as. Um, they're limited as far as physical contact. You know, you can only do so many padded practices a year that that takes a toll on the offensive line more than anything else. Cause they don't get the practice time of live, you know, hitting in pads yeah. and, and practicing it. And the old lines, you see it. Even good old lines don't give their quarterbacks much time. I mean, right. We saw in the second game while well, Cincinnati's line was obviously beat up, but Joe Burrow had, and we'll get back to this game after, but he had no time to, to throw it all. And it didn't seem like Purdy had a lot of time to throw either before he got hurt. I know the Eagles defensive line is good, but these lines, they don't practice enough anymore. So they're not as cohesive and they give up more pressure. Both that- QBs you mentioned were under duress the whole game. I mean, just that D line was from both uh, the chiefs and the Eagles was just swarming uh, Purdy and bro and, and Johnson. Uh, for 49ers like dude that was relentless that pass rush was was something else man and uh it really had a big effect on both those games especially the eagles where they just they have they come at you in waves they've got so many def- uh, good players on the defensive line it's ridiculous um just line outside linebacker inside line i mean yeah. dude just they're gonna come outside from everywhere. Redick, they got the, the first round pick from last year they got you know it, it's just it's ridiculous yeah. I, yeah. Hopefully, Andy Weil can bring that uh, philosophy here to Pittsburgh. Imagine yeah. Sue and Hargrave on the same D line. Yeah, and the Sue that's just, just pick disgusting. Up off the street. That's just disgusting. Like the I, I could have done just, that I instead of going with Tyson Alualu, they should have tried to sign Amon Dem- uh, and Sue. That just boggles my mind, and that's with Andy Weil in the front office. They still could have, you know, they had plenty of time to sign Sue, and didn't. So yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, the other game. Well, we should hit. Let me let's hit on this. Shanahan missed that challenge in that first touchdown, right? He, it was freaking obvious that the Eagles were rushing to the line. That Devonta Smith didn't think he caught yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. What's the worst that can happen? You throw the flag, you lose a timeout. Okay, that's not ideal, but it's the first quarter. But also, how did the NFL not see that angle? I don't know, man. That, that whole quick review thing which came out of nowhere and then shows up sometimes it doesn't show up on other times they gotta they gotta clean it up i read something where they they have it to where they're supposed to get every angle like yep. right now and they still miss that so i was kind of like mm, that's kind of weird it's hell of an effort by uh smith though holy shit oh, so, what a, yeah that that ball over his head he made a great yeah. grab and but it didn't catch it the ball came no. out and that could have been a, a turning point in the game for sure Yep, because they're out the bat, that that, they end up scoring yep. on that drive. First drive, yep. But, yeah, I mean, I just 
I, I, you know, sooner or later, I knew this, this whole, uh, fairy tale with Purdy was going to come to an end and, and, you know, I, I just knew it was going to happen and, and it finally did. I mean, in Philadelphia with all them weapons, no. Um, I wonder if, if he stays healthy, if they, if they, obviously they make it a closer game, but geez, I don't know. I think they may have been able to pick off Philly if they, if he'd stayed healthy. Ooh, Purdy with Pur- Purdy would stay healthy. Yeah, I, th- I think they were. They just started right in the ship. They were starting to play a little better. You know, they didn't play with the first drive. I disagree. They were going to put so much pressure on him, dude. They they were just going to keep pummeling him. There's no way. Sooner or later, he was going to start seeing ghosts. <laughs> start making mistakes. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just saying that's that's a rough situation to be in. And I, you know, I you know I could use Joe Burrow as an example. I mean, this guy is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And look what happened when he went to Arrowhead last night. Had two picks under duress the whole time. Sometimes it forced him to make bad throws, make mistakes. It would happen with Purdy too. It was going to happen with Purdy. That's the way I look at it. We talked about the uh, Bengals offensive line and I didn't think this was the game where they were going to fall apart. I thought they'd, they'd eke this one out too. And then, and then in the Super Bowl get exposed, but yeah, I had him winning. I, I thought the Bengals would win. Uh, my God, I Chris Jones, I, bro. Chris yeah. Jones was a beast. everywhere. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, I mentioned him a little bit in the last pod, but I didn't think he would be this just flat out dominant. Like they, they, they had no answers for him. He was a beast in the senior bowl. He was a beast in the, at the combine. He was, he's a beast no matter yeah. what evaluation that went in before that draft. And they, he did get drafted by the first round was the second. I believe it was the first round. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, great pick. Yeah. I and mean, he's been their best defensive lineman for a couple of years now. He's just a dominant, dominant player. Um, man, it seemed like the referees were just uh, one-sided in this game. I don't know how you felt about it, but man, they were calling some penalties on the Bengals that were just like, what in the fuck is going on here? If I was a Bengals fan, thank God I'm not, but I'd be jumping off the roof with this bat. Yeah. The I mean, pass I, interference call, the, the intentional grounding call was kind of suspect. That play that didn't happen. I mean, come on. Yeah, there were some calls. Was, I don't, these refs have been bad. We say it every year, bro. These refs are bad yeah. every year and they're never held accountable. So this is what you get. If you don't have accountability, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna have a good product on the field. Just period. Uh, the refs are just gonna do whatever, and yeah, they were the biggest story of the game yesterday. Unfortunately, and that's that yeah. should never happen. That should never happen. How about um, that odd punt that hit the wire or whatever? That hit the wire. How did they miss that? Yeah, it, that's another one. It clearly hit something. Right. You see the trajectory another... of the ball and the, and the spin like <laughs> it goes completely. Something. <laughs> something changed that oh, like you man. know they can't get anything right they can't get out of their own way no it's just unbelievable uh that that kid joseph Asai boy it's gonna I take a long time kid. i, I, I feel, bad to feel bad for him too now i did you even see though, the clip where, even um, though i hate the Bengals and i wanted yeah. them to lose and they're arrogant that kid specifically i i feel bad for him like yeah he's running full speed after him it's kind of you know it's one of those things, man, you know, hopefully he grows from it. You know, I, you feel bad for the kid, but like, man, it's tough. You see the clip where they were interviewing him in the, in the locker room and, uh, uh, the, the other guy got mad. BJ Hill came over and yeah. told him all this crap. Stop asking that same question. The dude feels bad enough. I thought that was a good, good deal on, uh, yeah. Good teammate. BJ Hill to step up for his teammate. And, um, they also had a clip of, uh, the Bengals linebacker screaming at the top of his lungs, walking through the tunnel, saying, "What the f you doing?" This no, that's that. that was that was your guy, Jermaine Pratt. <laughs> Jermaine Pratt, yeah, yeah. Why it the was. hell did you touch the quarterback or something like that? He was pretty pissed. Um, that's one call I won't blame the referees on. It, it might have been a little ticky tack, but you have to call that. He's five yards out of bounds. You shove him, he falls down. That gets called. Yeah, and I mean every time, and it looked even time. worse because. Mahomes went flying like 10 yeah. feet, 15 yeah. feet, you know. So that's, mean, what made it, that's what made it look bad. But, I mean, you got a 250, 300-pound, you know, guy running full speed. I mean, at least he looks like he weighs 300 pounds. Full speed and then trying to put on the brakes. It's not going to yeah. happen. He's got to do the best he can, though. You can't in that spot. Yeah. It's huge. No, I, 15 yards. I agree. Try to find a way, man. 
but that that was the game right there. I mean, they yeah. were already way down there. They're, I mean, Buckner is more than capable of making it. Field goal kick from what the would have been a hell of a lot more 40? interesting. Yeah, fifteen years but back. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I hate to see it like that. But at least it was finally a good game. Yeah, we hadn't got a game like that where it was down to the you know the last field goal for what a while. All the other games oh, last playoffs, week felt right? like yeah, game that was every close. game has felt like it's not close or it's a blowout yeah. or it's it's yeah, not it's been a great playoffs this down year. to the wire. No, it sucked. You got any early thoughts on the Super Bowl? Who do you who do you think? We'll we'll make pred- official predictions later on, but any first impressions? <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, right now I don't have a lot. I, I just I think we'll see health wise how these teams are doing, yeah. but they get two weeks, so like. Yeah. I it's just the Chiefs uh, running backs. So, I mean, wide receivers are beat up. I mean, this is what Mahomes' second trip or no third third, third trip. Yeah. Yep. Third, He's my God, third trip already. Yeah, uh, five straight AFC championships. They said. Yeah, that's yeah crazy five too. straight that's five straight crazy. AFC championships. This will be his third. Is it third trip to the Super Bowl or yeah. second? He lost one to uh, Brady, and then they beat the uh, 49ers a couple years before that. That's so right. Third. That's right. So. It's Jalen Hurts' first trip, yeah. so I kind of want to lean towards the guy that's been there. You know, this would be his third time, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. If, I, if Patrick Mahomes is healthy, they're going to win. Kansas City's going to win. I I'm, I feel pretty strongly on that. Um, if he's gimpy, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, he was walking gingerly again yeah, towards the end of that game. He in that game. You could tell. He wasn't scrambling like he – and I didn't realize that Kelsey was so banged up yeah, either. I didn't until know they either. Were like he was, he was a game time decision. I yeah, was like, wait, what? Yeah. So yeah. and he played great. So he yeah. whatever was bothering him, he shook that off and he played great. Right. He's fun to watch. He's a fun guy to watch. Um, he is. Isaiah Pacheco. Where did he come from? I mean, what a! I know he's had a pretty good season, but man, he was a monster yesterday. That guy literally made Ceh for them. Edwards Hilaire just disappear. Disappear. Yep. That guy went an IR and never came back. <laughs> like. Yeah, was, like I, was, I remember because I had him on my fantasy team and it said he was going to be out like four to six weeks, bro. It's been like 10 weeks. <laughs> dude's yeah. gone. Like they're I, like, nope, we're good. The, I the, can see him not even making a team next year. Dude, him and McKinnon, the rise of him and McKinnon has made Edwards Hilaire not even no need for him. I was banging the table for the Steelers to, to pick up McKinnon in the offseason. It worked out all right because Jalen Warren became a star, but. Or at least had a good season. Still yeah. could have used McKinnon in his speed out of the backfield. I think it still would have been a good a good addition. But yep, it is what it is. Um, all right, we did defensive free agents on Friday, so we figured we wrap this up and do offensive free agents for the Steelers today. Um, this is a lot uh, less fun list to go through. Yeah, it's I was looking at this and I'm like, uh... very weak. There's only a couple guys I think on this list I'd even want even bother wanting back. Um, we'll start with Mason Rudolph. I think it's irrelevant whether you want him back. He's never coming back. He's not coming back. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind him as the backup at a cheap price, you know, whatever, but he's not coming back. That guy is going to end up in Dallas. Yeah. He's from that area, right? He went to school. I believe so. I could be wrong, but I think he is. I I think you're going to see him end up in Dallas. That's just my prediction. Um, him and his buddy Washington will be down there. Maybe. Oh, that's right. They caught him. Never no, mind. Yeah, Washington. Guy. He could go back to, to Dallas yeah. at some point. I'm just I mean, saying, I could see that happen. I really could. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Mason's an okay backup. You know, for a couple million yeah. a season. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't go crazy over it. Although, apparently, the Seals are keeping Mitch Trubisky according to <sighs> AR2. So, we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, Mason's gone. Um, number two on the list, Derek Watt. It's all about money with Derek Watt, right? If they if it they get him back at like a, a minimum or a little over minimum for a season, I'm fine with. They finally use him this year for the first time, right? It's still um, not not worth five million fucking no, dollars. No, like, it's like, not getting five million. Like you no can't give him that kind of money. Come on. Um, yeah, like I said, league league minimum, maybe a little bit more. Right. Um, you probably want a younger guy at that position. Fullback's a tough position. It's, it. it Although he hasn't played much over the last couple of seasons, so I'm sure he's fresh. Um, like, but see, here's my thing: Connor Hayward can play that position. Yeah, I don't know if he can block as well, but he certainly can be like he can catch out of the backfield. Catch though. out of the backfield. Think stuff, of yeah. uh, I can't. I'll butcher his name. It starts with J for the 49ers, the fullback for them, Jacusic uh, or whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking um, about. Yep. 
think, he's a much think, better blocker than than um than Hayward right. is. But yeah, you're but right. But hands wise out of the backfield, yes, that's another weapon. Absolutely. So to me, They're you can have easily to, save that money for something else. I mean, Hayward proved me wrong. He was Oh, me too. He, he became a weapon. They're gonna have to find they're gonna have to get creative to find ways to get him in the offense and maybe fullback's one of those positions. Um yeah, Derek Watt, we'll see what happens. He is he is TJ's brother. So keep that in mind. They might want to keep the peace and right. keep him around. We'll see. Um, next on the list, Jesse Davis. Whatever. Bye. Uh, I don't, I don't care. I literally don't, yeah. don't care. We have no <laughs> idea. He didn't, the line was so healthy this season. We don't have any yeah. idea what kind of player he is. Nor do we really care. He's replaceable. Same with the next guy on the list, Trent Scott. Again, we have no idea what these guys they don't didn't care. Play. Yeah. Never showed anything. So you'd, you'd like to see him upgrade with, with a draft pick and get some better yes. depth than these guys. that are just kind of camp fodder at this point. Um, yep. Miles Boykin. I'd like to see him back. I mean, he became a special teams kind of ace for them this year. He, he... I agree. I mean, he was really good on special teams. Uh, he is a, you know, a big body guy to have out there wide receiver. Mm-hmm. If you need him in a pinch or like say in, you know, red zone if you need that guy that you can throw up and go get the ball that's another guy that's another option you can look at really honestly yeah. besides pick yeah. and so i i, I wouldn't have a problem bringing him back either i mean depending on the price you know yeah I mean, but it's not like he did much so i don't think it's going to be that big no, of, it won't, won't cost you much big um, of an ask yeah so no i i'd be fine with bringing him back yeah, he became one of the best gunners in the league I, I think he was up there in special teams tackles it's a good play to have around veteran yeah. guy yeah. i mean like you said big body I wouldn't mind seeing Miles Boykin back. Um, no, definitely one of those like Swiss Army knife guys where you can use yeah. him for multiple things. So he'd be fine with me. I, I wouldn't have a problem with them bringing him back. Um, next up, Benny Snell. He's replaceable to me. I could give or take. I think Tomlin likes him. I think Tomlin brings him back. He's not going to cost you much. Really good on special teams. Yeah. He actually looked good when that line started to block. He actually yeah. started to look good. Uh, it's one of those things, man. Like, do they keep him and, and keep what's his name on the practice squad, uh, McFarland, or is it vice yeah. versa? Does he end up going to the practice squad? McFarland gets that third hat. I don't know, but I, a part of me went from he needs to go to now I'm like eh, maybe maybe you know depending on the price bring him back too. I don't know. Yeah, Mc, I think McFarland would be the practice squad because Benny Sweat, Snell's too good in, on special teams to keep on the on the practice that's, squad. That sounds about right to me too. Yeah, but. I, um, McFarland. I would love to see McFarland get some more snaps. He played well too when uh, all those running backs were down. He had right. a pretty good game that day. I, he's got speed, which none of these backs have. So I'd like to see more out of McFarland, but yeah, I don't know about that. They don't seem to like him too much for some reason. They keep bringing him back though. They signed him again to a futures deal, so we'll see about McFarland. It's Benny that Snell. speed, man. That speed. That's, you know, this team needs. We'll, we'll talk about it. He's got the home run. He's got that home run speed, yeah. man. If he Even could just you, um, figure out a way to get him in space, make it happen. Turn him into like a wide receiver. I mean, you, could. you know, a Brandon Ayuk type guy. You know, a, a guy yeah. that can catch and run. Get creative with him. Like the dude's got speed. He's a pretty good receiver out of the backfield. Yeah, I was gonna say like we haven't really seen him that much catching the ball. Like he was good in at Maryland, I think. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen much of McFarland at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, um, yeah, not much at all. Uh, Zach Gentry, I assume he's back. I don't know if he's going to get any. Yeah, I mean that's why I keep mocking in my drafts. I keep mocking them taking a tight end towards the end because they've already got you know two basically starting worth tight ends. So the third one, they can bring him back. He he might want to come back, man. I think he likes being with Muth and them. Like I think yeah. he likes the group. So I. I could see him coming back on the cheap, not costing them a lot. Yeah, he didn't block as well as I thought he would coming into the season, but no, but man, do I like some of those schemes where they get him involved, man? Yeah, I really do. He's a pretty good receiver, a little better than we thought. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind Zach Gentry back either way. Or if he's gone and they upgrade that position, I'd be fine with that too. No, I love it. his plays on third and five. Yeah. You know, short yardage yep. dump off to him. He grinds and runs over three little corners. Big dude in the open field, man. First down. Yeah, yeah, like I, I, Six, I like seven, that. Right? So, yeah. Um, that's it, really, for the free agents. That, that um, Stephen Sims is a restricted free agent, so you assume he's back. Same yeah, I'm thing. looking at the RFAs right now. Yeah, JC Hassenhauer too. Yep. You assume he's back as well. Um, 
I like Hassenhauer as a backup. I think he yeah. does fine as a backup. Yeah. I Steven every Sims. time he goes in, he's he's not he's not he's not that big of a downgrade. No, he's I mean, solid, right? He's solid. Yeah. When when you ask him to come in for short, you know, for short periods yeah. of time, he's he's solid. Last year he was an upgrade. <laughs> he was definitely an upgrade over Kendrick. It Green. was like yes, wow, sir. you know, people yes, aren't sir. running up the middle untouched, <laughs> killing Ben. It was like all right, well, took them a whole season to do this, but okay. Jesus. Anyway, Kendrick Green make the roster next year? I doubt it. Right. Oh, he, he will. Get, he just never get a helmet. <laughs> he can get a hat all season, right? Tomlin is. What's the, what's the point? It's never. Tomlin's not going to admit that guy. Yeah, maybe you might be right I, on that. You might be right. Uh, and as far as Sims goes, what do you think? I. And he, he like, overnight became a shitty returner. Like he was great. Like the first three, he, four weeks. He still shows flashes, but he still shows some dumb mistakes too. You're like, yeah. dude, what are you, what are you doing? But then that catch man in the fucking. I was gonna uh, say he got better as a receiver and worse was that, as a returner. Was that the Ravens or the Raiders game? I forget already. That, that was, was the, the Raiders, Ra- Ravens, right? wasn't it? That was the one before the touchdown, right? Yeah, it was. A couple before the touchdown. Yeah, so it was Ravens. I think it was. <sighs> they need a slot receiver. They don't have one right now. Calvin Austin, we don't know what we – we have no idea what Calvin Austin is going to be. So, he did get better as a receiver. Uh, you can bring again, him back. He's cost you nothing. Again, bring him back. Yeah, cost you absolutely nothing. So Probably going to cost Vettman at yeah. that. Maybe a little more. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Barely doubtful. more. So, Barely. yeah, I could see maybe bring him back. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, at, at the worst, he's camp fodder and, and – yeah, they whatever. All the receivers stick him on, you know, stick him on the practice squad if you have to. See what happens. That's the way I look at it. But absolutely, that's the list. Um, all the big decisions are on defense. We went over it on Friday. It is all the big decisions of defense. Um, what they're going to do? It'll be interesting to see. Do they spend uh, cap dollars on defense and use all the draft picks on offense? Do they mix it up? Do you saw the news today, off? right? Uh, which news are we talking about? The salary cap? Yeah, 224 and change. 224.8 million. Yeah, almost 225. So That's... I went and looked at our cap hit. Yeah. It's bad. Uh, yeah. 232.7 well, million. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Like, I didn't think we were that high. But like we said, you cut uh, William Jackson third. You well, we thought they were going to cut Trubisky. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, and that's the thing. Like, they're going to make space. Yeah. It's just they it, can mix them. They have an ability I to make just, a lot of space. I just can't believe they wouldn't cut Trubisky. Like, I, I to me, it's, it's I mean, be a big one, man. You cut that's him and William Jackson the third. That's twenty million. You just over. You just million. got rid of. Yeah. Or no, twenty-two around, million, right? Yeah. You restructure TJ and Minka, and you got another another twenty million plus. So to play I with. mean. To me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just – I don't know yeah, why I, AR2 talked the way he did. Like, he doesn't see him, but I don't you know. the feeling they caught him off guard with that question, and he just went yes. with the only answer he could think of at the time? I know? I think he definitely was caught off guard maybe, and he's just talking – Didn't want to stir the pot and just said, yeah, of course. Literally you know shooting from the hip. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Probably has no fucking idea what he's yeah, talking yeah. about. <laughs> I have a feeling that's what happened. I mean, I assume they prepped these questions for him, but maybe they don't. Maybe they kind of just left them. Yeah, you'd think there'd be a little talk before they start like, hey, we're going to talk about this and that, you know, but was, I don't know, man. Was that the interview with the the writers or was that uh, Papiani that asked him that question? You know what? See, if it was the writers, then that's off the, that's off the hip. And he's not ready. He's not prepared for that. I'm not sure. I know yeah, I saw I, it though. Like I saw yeah, him talking. I, I, yeah, I did so too. I did. I just too. can't I'm, remember if it was. I'd be uh, interesting to go look back at who asked which one it was. But either way, he he talked. It, he said it. You know, and yeah. it's like, uh, uh what? <laughs> Ten million for a fucking backup? All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Yeah, no. In fact, he may push his way out of there. He may request a trade. Now that I think about it, a trade or a get cut. I mean, he's yeah. got a little bit of guaranteed money that he can take and get a new deal and and make right. So he's I, not going to take see, a pay cut. He's I could see, I could see him pushing that, and yeah. they'll just what it will be. It'll be what the pre whatever cut to save that money. Is it the June first cut or the? 
before June first that helps them this season. After yeah, June 1st, right. Next okay, season, yeah. I was gonna say I think it's June first. They gotta cut them before that, then they'll save all that money. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um. But see, I guess it wouldn't matter. Yeah. So. Yeah, I that dude's got to. I'm sorry, that dude's got to go. There's just yeah, you, I, you, there's you, no you, way. I mean, they <laughs> probably will keep him, but for me personally, there ain't no fucking way. Um, no, I, I think I'm they done. cut him. I, you can't carry a ten million dollar back court. I know you're not paying Kenny Pickett anything, so it kind of offsets. But still, you can't. this dude's currently making more. I told you more than Hurts in, in Burrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, <laughs> he's making it more than anybody that's on their rookie deal. So uh, yeah. even this, you know, so that goes back what four years of quarterbacks that are pretty yeah. awesome that he's got. He's getting paid more than. All right, you ready to get into this or what? We're gonna we're gonna have a little debate here. Um, I've got a little I'm, offensive offense envy. I'm oh, good. I'm um I'm very jealous. <laughs> Watching all these playoff teams go up and down the motherfucking field like it's nothing. While I've been watching the Steelers grind out three yards at a time for, what, 24 months? <laughs> Two years? Three years? 100-year war, man. <laughs> I've Jesus. had it. I've had it. So, I am starting to warm up to the idea of drafting Jordan Addison first, 17th overall. I'm starting to want to. I haven't committed to it yet, but I'm starting to want to. So I am going to surprise you. And instead of being so negative about it, I made what I do seven negatives and seven (laughs) positives. All right. Okay. All right. I I put some work into this. I was like, you know what? I'm not just going to be negative. I'll try to find the positives. So which would you like to hear first from me? Give me the negatives. Let's go through the negatives. Let's go okay. through the negatives first. First one. So you draft this guy with the first pick. Where's he? When's he playing? Because you got DJ Pickens, Austin the third, Muth. You're gonna have Connor Hayward. You're gonna have Najee. You're gonna have Warren. Like, when are you gonna put this guy out there? Dave, he plays in the slot. Game one, play one. Cool. Little- that brings me to number two. All right, You're spending the 70th overall pick on a slot receiver. Yeah, but slot receivers now, that's you like walked an right into my. You walked right into my <laughs> number two. Because well, I knew you were going to say that. I go, he's going to say he's going to play the slot. I knew well, you were going to say it. Slot receivers play the majority of the downs now. It's not like it used to be. I mean, the Steelers played a lot of two tight ends last year. You're right. But that was out of necessity because they didn't have any other fucking wide receivers to put out there. They only had Steven <laughs> Sims and... Uh, Wigan? Who? <laughs> Boykin? Uh, Boykin, yeah. I mean, they didn't have any other. Uh, <laughs> Gunnar Olszewski were the two slot guys. Um, I don't want to see that anymore. I don't want I'm and done. They, Okay, so you're talking going to a four wide receiver setup. No, three or you're wide. Just benching, three, so you're three just wides. benching Austin the third then. I looked up, I looked up Calvin Austin, okay? Because I knew you were going to bring him up. Uh-huh. And – <laughs> let, me, let me let me get this so um i get this right my man is five seven and what? 170 pounds that's that's not true he's that he's something old he's five foot nine now now this is mock draftable his his combine measurements five seven and three quarters he measured at the combine 170 pounds my daughter is almost bigger than this man. And he's injured already. He's already hurt. He couldn't even get through two weeks of training camp. And the man's hurt already. He's got a bad foot. The only thing he's got going for him is he ran a 4-3-40. If he can't run the 4-3-40 anymore, first he's off, 170 pound paperweight. First off, that's a typo. He was five foot nine. It's not seven. He's five foot nine now. He weighs he weighed 173 pounds. Okay. He runs a four three two day. Yes, he does. Like he's he was considered the next Tariq Hill, possibly. They said Tyreek Hill ish or esque, whatever. Yeah, that's the speed part. That's but but that's what you could possibly get with this guy. How fast does he run on one leg? Well, right. But he's got a whole season and a half to freaking heal. He's going to be we'll fine. 
but I'm just saying, like, you've got you already spent the draft pet pick on this guy. Like, you've got your three wide receivers. And Dave, have you like heard you the name said, Sequest Golson. It's Golson. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, that was that's that undersized, that's fast painful. guy that. But got, he was a projected fourth rounder that they took in the second. Like, you know. At least with this, they actually took him in his projection. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not. It's not. They don't have as much to lose with him. It's, you're right. Right. 100% right. And that's 100%. and that's the thing with that. But you're. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't disagree with you. Like on some of that, what you're saying. It's just that they technically already spent the draft capital on this kid to be their speedster. But I'll I'll get to more of that here in a second with the positives. Anyway. Okay. So, all right. So I want to ask you this. So you're on board now with taking Jordan Ass or you're getting there or whatever. Okay. So okay. my question is, is he worth not getting Peter Skrinsky, Paris Johnson, Osiris Torrance, Devin Witherspoon, Joey Porter Jr., Cam Smith, Brian Breesey? Is he worth not getting them? Because that's my question. Because I don't know about that. If some of these guys drop and they're there, I'm not taking Jordan Addison. Sorry. I'm not. Like, Peter Skrinsky is going to be probably a perennial all pro for 10 plus years. Sound familiar? Could because be. that's what they said about the guy, the Ravens guy at center now. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, and, and some of these guys can be, you know, you can debate some of these guys. Like, you know, Cam Smith. You know, he's between 17 and 32 right now, right? Yeah. Joey Porter Jr. Some don't see him making it to the second round. Uh, Brian Barisi is now getting projected in the top 10, but I've seen him in, in, in uh, simulators yeah. fall to us. If that man falls to us and they take Jordan Addison over him, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Mel Kuyper didn't even have him in his first round in his first mock draft. Right. Brian now, Brisi. that's the other thing. You get some of these other – mock draft experts and they don't have like but he did put yeah. Nancy up there in top 10 yeah. who's was his, a third rounder a month ago his mock I told draft you this, this fluctuates up and down a lot so Mike that's my thing like we got to be careful what we're doing here like okay you want another wide receiver when you just nailed one last year yep. and grafted another one so you've already spent draft capital on two wide receivers the year prior are you really going to spend that capital on a third because mind you, when I think of this, I think of the Raiders, who just constantly drafting wide receivers, wide receivers, yeah. wide receivers. And they did, and it was like, dude, what are you doing? You got to go get other things besides that. So that worries me. So, and I'm not even done yet. All right. Number four, you got to remember, it's going to be the defense that faces Burrow and Mahomes. It ain't, it ain't going to be Jordan no, Addison. Dave. Unless you want to treat this like the Big 12, and we're just going to say, fuck defense, and we're going to all try to score 60 points and hope to God we outscore the other team. Let me tell you something right now. that's basically what you're saying. We could drag Joe Green, Troy Polamalu, Jack Lambert, on and on and on, put them on this defense. The way the game is refed and called now, it doesn't matter. You're really, not, you really don't think they, they could hold, hold them back a little bit? Hold them back a little bit, maybe. But if you're building your team on defense, you're not winning a Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. You are not going to stop Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, or Josh Allen with the game on the line. Him, him just, you know, marching down the field to win. You're not stopping them. You're hey, not. hey. You have to Tampa, outscore them. Tampa Bay did it. Yeah. but Tampa Bay did it. But, with a D-line, with a yeah. dominant D-line, they did it. Kansas City had three offensive linemen out that game. True. True. That's the only reason why they won that game. It's the only reason. Well, it was it was a nightmare matchup for KC in that situation. Yeah, because they had a good defensive but, line. You're right. And but they Kansas still City's pulled it off, though, bro. They still yeah. pulled it off. He still I mean, had Tyree Kill. Here we go. He still had Tyree Kill, and they still stopped him. Yeah, but he couldn't. Do you remember that game? And he, and like he was Burrow healthy, did. right? He was healthy, but the offensive line – he had less time than Joe Burrow did this past Sunday. He would take two steps back, and they were killing him. I'm just saying he had he had Tyree Kill, and it still wasn't enough to win that game because the defensive line was good enough to get past those backups to stop him. Yeah. So I if mean, you do put 
a hell of a Cam defensive Hayward. line, if you put a hell of a defensive line together, because that's probably the key to stopping him is getting pressure just from the line alone. If you can do I mean, that, then you're in business. You have so Cam I'm Hayward, just saying, you have TJ Watt, you have Alex Highsmith. You already have the pass rushers. Right, but they still didn't have – it's still not enough. So, I agree look, with you. So that, so that you. leads me to my next one. It's not a top need. One, DL, you have Cam Hayward who's – He's got to fall off sooner or later. The man's amazing. Like I, to do what he yeah. does at his age. Okay. After him, you got Leal, who's, to, in my opinion, is still a question mark. He showed flashes, but but that's it. That's all you got. The rest of those guys, Louder Milk, and uh, uh, those other guys, they're they haven't showed me anything. I'm not impressed with any of them. No, nope, they need to add a defensive lineman. There's no doubt. Then you get 100%. to linebackers. You got Jack with one groin and Robinson. <laughs> that's it. Like Robinson's green as fuck, and you saw in that that last game that he clearly wasn't ready. And then so that's it. That's all you've got. Everybody else is is we're we're talking about bringing Spillane back. That's how bad the linebacker situation is. Yeah, but you say that's bad. The Pittsburgh Steelers think that's good. Oh, they no. think Miles Jack and Robert Spillane is fine, and that's what they're gonna do. And I think they're wrong. <laughs> well, I think they're wrong too. Okay. And to go back to one of your other points, yes, I would like to have a Peter Skaronsky, a Broderick Jones. But the Steelers are not going to draft an offensive lineman in the first round. They think their offensive line is fine. Well, they think it's fine. One more last need. Your true number one corner they had this year is a free agent. Yes. He's probably gone. I would love for them to bring him back. Well, But it, say, say he's gone, right? We'll just count him as gone. You're left with Witherspoon, who he couldn't even get on the field. You're left with Levi Wallace, who was exposed. He's a number two at best. Okay. Then you've got what? You've got WS, WJ3, who's not even going to play. They're going to cut, cut him. Right. Cut. Then you've got who is it? You've got uh, Pierre. You got Pierre, right? Or is he a free agent too? He's I can't remember. free agent. He'll be back. <laughs> He's so you, He'll be back. Wait, but you, you hope you don't know that. Well, restricted free agent, they can't go anywhere. Well, look, just Basically hear me out here. Anywhere. So now we've actually made my point better. We're really low on corners, healthy corners. We have one healthy corner, one healthy corner right now. Yes. And that's Levi Walls. So you're telling me you're going to not take Joey Porter. You're not going to take Cam Smith. You're not going to take uh, Witherspoon. Any of those three, the other the other Witherspoon from uh, yes, from Clemson, the, uh, I think. Okay, uh, um, you're not going to yeah. take any of those three with 17 over Jordan Addison. Dude, that's insane to me. That's insane to me. Like, I, I, if they're sitting there, I'm taking because the, it's dire straits for Steelers at the corner position. And, and actually, it's worse than I thought because I thought we still had Pierre. <laughs> like, oh, we're Pierre's really – depl- you hope. You hope. I don't know. Okay, I'm getting too far in this. Moving on to my next one. Okay. All right, so, oh, number six, T.J. Watt can't stay healthy. I I hate to say this, but he can't stay healthy. Um, And they rotate him more than most teams would. Look who you're talking to. Yeah. (laughs) Mr. Edge himself. I I want an edge badly. So they got to find a way to get one. And I'm not saying there's going to be one in the first round, nor am I saying spend that spend that on no i get i get what you're saying so I get, I get you. There's... so what i'm saying is is that those are there's so many d de- uh, needs defensively that man with those first five picks it is so crucial that they are able to land those positions like to me wide receiver is like it's after six on the list it really not, is not for me it's and to me, three. to me, that is okay. So, and it also goes off of projections and their, their draft value and who's there and who's available. Okay. Yeah. I'll say that too. Um, so I just, there's just no fucking way for me. No way. Now, my, it's my last one. It's my seventh re- reason to not. Okay. So to me, it's not just about being the Chiefs and Bengals, it's about putting yourself in a position to be on a successful path to the Super Bowl in general. And what I mean by that is, is we're not going to always face teams that are just like the Chiefs or the Bengals. We're going to face really good defensive teams. We're going to face 
or really good offensive teams. We need to become a more balanced one that has both a good offense and defense. We didn't make the playoffs this year because our defense failed to beat the Patriots and the Jets. They failed to stop oh, them, and they should have and didn't. Dave, Dave, Dave. They didn't make the playoffs because they scored 18 points a game. That too. That too. Don't get me wrong. That's why they but didn't when, make the playoffs. But when they did score more points than 10, the defense didn't stop. Dude, we put up 20 points with Kenny out there against the Jets. We were up by 10 points in yes, the fourth no, yeah. quarter, and yeah. they fucking blew it because yep. we didn't have enough players on that team once we lost Edmonds to stop the Jets. And TJ was out too. TJ and was TJ out. was out too. So – Again, the importance of having that defense, and it's crazy because you you want to think, hey, we highest highest spent defense, right? Is the yeah. highest costing defense, but what did it get you? wasn't it it wasn't good enough. So they got to plug those holes. They got to get better there if they have any hope, dude. All they had to do was just beat the Patriots or Jets. We're in the playoffs now, yeah. mind you. We get smoked, but <laughs> still, we're, well, well, that's. We're in the playoffs, at least. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So, enough negative. I'm done. Would you like let to me, hear the positives? Let me give my let me give my side, and you can do the positives. Okay. Um, let's start with the with the 17th pick. What are their options? They're not taking an offensive line. Uh, I talked oh. about this before. They think that offensive line is fine. They think it's good. That's why they brought Matt Canada back because the offense is improving. The line improved. The running game improved. We're all set. Nothing to see here. Corner, you make a great point. If the Steelers, that's the best value for the Steelers at 17 is corner. There's a lot of good corners. There'll be, there should be two or three good ones still left when they pick, at least. But here's my prediction. They're going to re-sign Cam Sutton. They're going to re-sign Cam Sutton. And they're going to say, we're fine at corner. We have Cam Sutton. We have Levi Wallace. We're fine. We don't need a corner. So now you don't need a corner. You don't need an offensive lineman. Defensive lineman, they need for sure. But there's no value there. There's one outstanding interior defensive lineman. He's going to go first. Top, 10. top you know, top five, top 10 at the very least. Jaylen oh, Carter. Jalen Carter. Oh, yeah. Jaylen top Carter. five, probably. Yeah. All the other guys, Breesy. Ika, um, all these other guys are, you know, I don't even think they get first round grades for most people now. It's, you know, late first, early second, which Ika's they have second round. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, Breesy, I mean, like you said, we've seen them all over the place. We've seen yes. them top 10. We've seen them not in the first round at all. Um, who else? It's, it's as of right now, as we stand in, in, you know, last day of January, almost last day in January. Defensive line is not good value at 17. It's just not. Flip to the offense now. They need an impact player on offense. They need a game changer. They don't have one. Deontay Johnson is a very good receiver. Catch the ball. No run after the catch. He's done. We don't know what George Pickens is. I mean, Tony brought it up in our, in our big pod before. There's a very good possibility. Well, there is a possibility that he could be a number a number two receiver, and that's it. Just a good number two receiver, and that's all. So enter Jordan Addison. Now, look, when I texted you the other day and started this conversation, I had this ball roll, and I was scrolling through, digging up on Jordan Addison, and one site had him at 4-3 projected 40. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This guy's good. Burn he's got it. the production. He's elusive, he's fast, he catches the ball, and he's 4-3 speed, I'm all in. Did a little bit more digging. Someone is claiming that he ran a 4-5 in high school. That's, that's a, it's all that too. That's a big difference. Now, if he, run, if he goes to the combine and runs 4-5, I'm out. He's a good receiver. We have a good 4-5 receiver. That's Deontay Johnson. We don't even know him. If he's in a low 4-4s, that's a different story altogether. Dave, the NFL wins with offense now. You win with offense. Defense, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because it does. But again, you're going up against Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence now. God forbid Aaron Rodgers gets traded to the Jets. 
um, you know, Patrick Mahomes. It, it's just on and on. Lamar Jackson. You got to be able to score points to win the FC. You have to be able to. You have to. You have to be able to score with these teams, touchdown for touchdown. The Steelers scored 18 points a game this year. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. They need more weapons on offense. As many, give me all the weapons. Give me all the weapons. Draft a receiver, draft another tight end, and then fill in the blanks. You know, sign a defensive lineman, re-sign, what's your call it, or go out and get somebody. Do you want them to take a tight end early too? Second round, third round, bring another tight end in. Why not? I'm going to try to have a stroke here. I'm, not trying <laughs> I'm to going have a stroke. YOLO, man. This is uh, – all right, so you ready for look mine? At the Bengals, look what the <laughs> Bengals throw at you. Hey, you boy, you know. Yeah. Look yeah. at what the, what the Chiefs throw at you. Juju, McCole Hardman, they got the best tight end in football. Look at the Eagles. They got Devonta Smith and uh, the kid from the Tennessee, and they got two good running backs, and they got a good tight end. It's an arms race. Who can put all the right. most weapons on the field? The Steels are way behind the Simons race. They need to catch up. That's my spiel. Okay. All right. So my seven positives, if they would take them, number 17. Uh, I, you already spoke of this, more speed to the wide receiver group. You think about it, 4-3 guy, if it's true, 4-3 guy, if Austin the third is a 4-3 guy still. That's pretty good. Now you're adding some, play, you're adding mm-hmm. some playmakers. Uh, to it brings me to number two. Now you are truly – working to make this offense a prolific offense. We talked about this after the draft, how we were so excited. They took Pickens and Austin the third yep. with the dream. They'd have a prolific offense. And then Matt Canada happened. But anyways. <laughs> uh, and he's still happening, by the way. And he's still happening. So then, but that you have that chance now. If you truly add a guy like Jordan Addison, and he is what he should be, then yes, you are now working on having a very dynamic offense, which – you're right. They need to have that kind of, if they're going to go toe to toe, a lot of these teams, they're going to need it. That's a great, that's a great point you make, especially with the AFC. It's just fucking stacked with quarterbacks and offenses. So it's a good point. What, what I forgot to say, and I'm sure you're going to bring it up is the pick Pickett and Addison uh, familiarity with each other. They clicked great at Pitt. I actually have that on here. That was number five. Go ahead, go ahead. Then go for it. Keep going. Okay. Um, number three. He's a great backup if one of the starters would get hurt. Say Austin the third is doing well. He's good to go. Say they, they do make him the fourth wide receiver. That's a good problem to have if that's your fourth wide receiver. Yeah. So that's another great situation to look at for them. If they hit on both Jordan Addison and Austin the third, then wow, you, know, you couldn't ask for a better situation. Number four, he is the insurance policy for Austin the yeah. third. That's, that's the way I could very easily justify this is, hey, look, Austin III, like you said, didn't even make it out of training camp, already injury prone, didn't even play this season. We got to go ahead and get that insurance policy. Let's go get Jordan Addison. So with that, you're, I think you're right. I, I, I think that'd be a good way to look at it too, is we don't know what's going to happen with Austin III. Let's go get this other guy. Worst case scenario, we got four great wide receivers. Yep. Cool. Um, number five, gives Kenny his favorite weapon in college. Uh, you see it with Burrow and Chase. There's another say, team they the brought Bengals, up. Right? Yeah, it looks like that shit, that connection stays. <laughs> it looks yeah. like it doesn't leave after college. It looks like it does stay. So, yeah, I I could see trying that trend to see if we can continue it. So that makes sense. Uh, number six, and this is what maybe some people don't realize. By drafting Jordan Addison – you effectively have your whole offensive playmaking core on their rookie contracts. Yep. All of like, I mean, literally Najee, Warren, uh, Muth, Connor Hayward, and then all the wide receivers except for DJ, yep. right? Starter wise. Yep. So, I mean, if you hit on that, right? Wow. That this is the time to go spend that money and, and make a run at trying to, get to the Super Bowl win it because now you've got so many stars on those rookie contracts that geez it is like this is the time to go for it because because look at the Bengals now they got a bunch of guys going on free agency and now the time's coming to pay Burrow pay Burrow you're yep so now they got lucky they're up in the the salary cap by damn near you know 
17 million, but still, there's still going to be a lot of money gets sucked up into that borough contract. Oh, yeah. So the Steelers, the Steelers right now, taking Addison, it would be like adding this whole dynamic offense on the cheap. Yep. So that's another positive to look at it that some people might not realize. Hey, this whole offense minus what two offensive linemen or three and DJ is all on rookie contracts. So yep. this is the time. Um, seven. It hopefully, if they take him, it means they added other impact players in yes. free agency. Yes. And like I've been telling you, I'm okay with it if they the top six needs, I, I told you, right? Linebacker, edge, defensive lineman, corner, guard, and tackle, right? Offensive tackle. If they add anything, those pieces in – the offseason, free agency, that's an impact player, go for it. Take Addison. That's how I feel. And if they do, maybe that, I'm hoping that means they did make those moves. And I'm saying just one. Add one impact player to any of those positions, and you can go after any wide receiver you want, just whatever. Give yourself that best player available uh, avenue of approach to this draft because that's what you want going into these drafts. You always want to try to take the best player available. But they have so many needs that I, I, I don't, you know, not sure that they can do that as much. But if they make these moves, then, then yeah, fucking go for it. So what that's, I hear you saying is that's nothing. Sign Javon Hargrave and draft Jordan Addison. Let's go. Let's go. That would make me fucking happy. Because the the more I look at this draft, like I said, they're not going to take an alignment. I don't think they're going to take a corner. I really don't. Maybe they they surprise me and they do. It's either going to be a defensive lineman. Or a cor- uh, probably a corner. Um, if they the don't only sign reason why more. the only reason why I think they might not is because they've been so horrible at it. Yeah, I mean, that's the value though, right? That's look. But um, the different people are in charge now too. So yeah, is a long way to go before the draft. I want to I want to watch Jordan Addison a little bit more because I'm not a Pitt fan, so I did not see a lot of him when he had his big season at Pitt. I want to see him at the combine. Um, this wide receiver group is not. Not top heavy. There's not a lot of superstars. There's some guys later in the draft that are decent, but I mean, I think it was one of the guys. Was it um, one of the guys didn't even have a wide receiver in the first round, or just one? It's it's basically him and a TCU kid for first round talent. Uh, I think and Johnson. Johnson, Johnson, yeah, and that's it. So now, now, mind you, just so you understand. <clears throat> Now, he went from having 100 receptions, 1,593 yes. yards, and 17 touchdowns, which is incredible, to 59 receptions, 875 yards receiving, and eight touchdowns. So it, it went downhill. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he was injured. Maybe the quarterback was horrible because that could happen in college. No, the USC's got a very good quarterback. He's going to be number okay. one pick the following year probably. So I don't, I don't know why his, his – Different system. Everything you know, different dropped. scheme. That's what I'm wondering. You know, a lot of change. So I don't – he was the big fish in Pitt. Pitt. He was the big fish. You know, he yeah. was the only receiver. USC had a lot of weapons. So but he to- made a lot of combative catches. I mean, some very good catches. So, um, so I don't know, man. It's just one of those things. But he's kind of on the smaller side. He's six foot, but only 175 pounds. Yeah, he, he's, he's smaller. Uh, but- the only thing is, is that, you know, I, I see Devonta Smith for the Eagles. I see, yeah. like, all these guys that are – well, Chase isn't that – he's tall, but he's not that – Big, he's just he? thicker. Uh, there's, there's a couple of guys though. Um, who's the kid in Miami too? Um, not Tyree Kill, the other guy. He's small Waddle? too. Waddle's kind of small too. Um, yeah, th- those guys work now in the NFL. I mean, yeah, I mean that's. I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because I said Austin's too small, but he is. He's significantly well, five foot nine. We'll, 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 we'll be in the middle. Five foot eight. What's the difference? Five eight. Yeah, yeah. five eight. Um, you know, only 170 pounds soaking wet, right? So, yeah. you know, I. But. We'll see. I just hey, look, see Austin as a gimmick player, really, and not as long uh, as as long. Look, man, as long as they sign some guys in the off season, then then it's cool with me. I would rather them go into the draft where they can just take best player available. I yeah. prefer that. But man, I just there's a lot of needs I see. But oh, that I didn't I didn't even bring up the other part I wanted to bring up with the negative. <laughs> so as like needs, like I was bringing up needs. 
I was going to mention yeah. how Dan Moore and Kevin Dotson combined for 22 penalties and 11 sacks. Do you know that they combined for more than the other three offensive linemen combined? Yeah, no, I, I, we lived it, bro. It was just awful. That is, um, that is so bad. Like, Maybe I'm completely wrong on this. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm thoroughly convinced that they are very happy with the offensive line as it is. And they're not going to mess with it. They'll take one late in the draft. Uh, fourth, third round, yeah, I, that's just to I get some depth. Too. But they're not going. I, I'd be surprised, and that's too bad because like I hear said, some mention they're going to do it to push them. Not a yeah. top player, but a yeah. fourth rounder to push. I like Brod- Broderick Jones a lot at the Georgia tackle. Um, there's that kid o- Osiris Torrance from Florida. It's supposed to be a monster guard. You know, uh, just a yeah. road grader. I'd be happy with with any of those guys. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, if they don't go wide receiver, they should go corner, right? They, they should. There's going to be a top end corner left. They, that's that's the thing, man. Like some of those, those top corners are going to be there. And now that we've talked it out, and I've realized that Pierre's not guaranteed either. Jeez, it is. Yeah, corner now even becomes pretty important, even more important now. I mean, Jesus. I mean, if something doesn't get signed for some reason, then yeah, they go corner 100%. Probably. Um, if they don't sign anybody in free agency, the defensive line, they might have to reach and grab one of these guys and hope they pan out. I mean, yeah. I like the I like the guy uh, Breesy. Um, he had kind of a down year this year. Um, seems like a pretty good player though. The the Cansey kid out of Pitt, I don't know what to do with him because he's small. But God damn it, he's the most impactful guy I've seen. I've watched a few guys now. He's in the backfield all day. Yeah. What do you What do you do with this guy? He's only right. two eighty. They some say he might not even be six feet tall. Wow. Uh, it'll be interesting how he, he measures too, but damn it. He's in the backfield all the time. He just beating people left and right. I mean, granted Pitt doesn't play the toughest schedule in the world either. I mean, AC no more than a one. three or a five technique. And that's what they're going to, that's how they have to roll them. Right. Yeah. I mean, he can't play nose for sure. No. So, but did, did the steals even, I mean, they don't use a lot of nose, you know, they, they, they decide to go with that two defensive linemen, two linebackers right. and all that, yep. you know, um, we'll see. I mean, I I'm intrigued with the kick can kid too. I, I, he seems like an impact player to me. We'll see. It's a long way to go. Like I said, um, I I'd love to see a left tackle, but that's not happening. Bro. I, <laughs> they love Dan Moore. They think he, they, they can fix him. The only one I'll be heartbroken about is Skorinsky. If they don't take him, I'll be heartbroken over that. That's the only one that hit him to me. That's it's the between top him. left tackle in the, in the yeah. draft between him and Paris one Johnson. top tackle yeah. in the draft. Yeah. I just, Jesus, how, how can you not take that when he falls? I, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll make one argument against myself. Um, once Claypool got traded, they had to go to two tight end because they didn't have enough receivers left that they trusted. So they went a lot of two tight ends. And that's when the run game started to work. So yeah. do you abandon the run, you know, all the success you had in running, go back to three wide receivers again and maybe fall back in the run game? Maybe I, I don't know if the Steelers are going to want to do that. You know, I don't think – I don't know if Mike Tomlin wants to go that way. I think he likes his run game, play defense, win close right. games. You know what I mean? So the likelihood of them drafting a wide receiver in round one is probably not very high. But That was my whole point about where is he going to play. That, that was my yeah. whole point. Yeah, because – that's my the, the argument against myself is they had a lot of success with two tight ends. The, the run game just, you know, you see the very clear line. They traded Claypool. They went to two tight ends. The run game. Successful as hell. Successful yeah. as hell. So, I don't know. But you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't win that way. You, consistently, you just can't. Well. You're going to get to the playoffs and you're going to get fucking railroaded. We're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you're I, right. We, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what they'll do. I don't. I just. This isn't. This isn't 1997 anymore, dude. You can't win that way with defense and pounding the football and you know, 21 points, 24 points wins the game. They, they, they didn't even dream of 24 points, but even they just can't turn into the Oakland Raiders, dude. Where all they do is take wide receivers in the first true. round. True. I think. I think because bring Canada back, we're caught in in in, in neutral. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. And that's that's why I didn't want Canada back. Because you know. my but my that's my biggest worry though, bro, is say they draft 
Jordan Addison, but Matt Canada stinks, and it doesn't matter who the fuck you draft. <laughs> it don't matter. You can I, literally have Jerry Rice and Joe Montana out there fucking. You're right about that too. And he would find a way to fuck that up because he'd have Jerry Rice running nothing but dig routes and, and you know button hooks <laughs> and be like, bro, what are we doing here? And it's that it's that age old argument too. Is it is it Canada? Or is that what Tomlin wants? The conservative. I, that's still know, left to be determined, and it's got to make you wonder. About it a thousand times, but I, I, I wonder about it seriously. Like I told you that the, the Tomlin wet dream, win every game seventeen ten, and you know his defense is the hero, and you know uh, you, you can't do it in two thousand twenty three. You just can't. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. But uh, that was a fun exercise. Um, we got a long way to go. I mean, like I'm, like I said, I'm partially in on Jordan Addison. I want to see how he tests. I want to watch him a little bit more. If he's not that top end guy, then forget it. That's um, I like the the fact that him and Kenny have a good um, thing going, but that's not good enough. He's got to be a, an elite receiver too, and then that pushes them over the edge offensively. You would hope. But it was it was a fun exercise. Um, we'll be doing more draft stuff. You know, we'll be doing draft stuff right up until I mean, right up until the draft itself. We're, we're gonna do Monday. We're gonna do Monday mock next week again. We're gonna do another yeah, mock we'll draft next week. Mock. Yeah, I'll do my mock this time. I'll try to I'll try to come up with a new one. I'll definitely come up with a new one. Um, that'll be fun. Yeah, that's about it. You got anything else? Um, no, that's it. There was no Steelers news this week whatsoever. That was just nothing. I was scouring. No. Not not much going on. All right, you can find me on Twitter at SteelerSank16. You can find us. I promised some more um, YouTube stuff. I haven't gotten to it yet, but tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, I'm sorry, I'll put some YouTube. I'll put some more on YouTube. Uh, email the show at daver at steelersanctuary.com. Subscribe to the podcast, please. We It'll help us out tremendously. Um, like Dave keeps telling you guys, it doesn't cost anything. Just hit the button. Hit the damn button, please. Hit- <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, Dave, give me your uh, Twitter handles. Get out of here. Uh, M underscore Corb. And then hit me up on TikTok as well. Steelers Sanctuary Podcast on there. All right. Thanks for listening to Steelers Sanctuary Podcast, and we'll talk to you next time.